Hello. Hello, welcome everyone to this um, sustainable and built environment and city resilience session. We will have, uh, this is a session of short presentations. Each of the participants will have uh, the four minutes of um, glory of participating in this, uh, in this conference. And uh, well, just to be brief, I'm going to, to start introducing the, our first speaker that it's going to be Carlos Bustamante. He's for the, from the San Sebastian University. He worked at the, uh, on, on a project on urbanism, uh, aerodynamic urbanism. Hello. Bueno, eh, como esto tiene que ser breve, eh, vamos a partir básicamente explicando en qué consiste este concepto. Urbanismo aerodinámico. Suena extraño, pero en realidad son dos binomios que eh, creo yo en, el, en las ciudades del futuro eh, se van a tener que juntar cada vez más. En los conceptos aerodinámicos, el manejo del viento dentro de la ciudad, eh, cada vez más es importante. Se ha manejado mucho el tema del sol, el tema del confort térmico, por ejemplo, de los espacios públicos, eh, los corredores de viento que se generan dentro de la ciudad para, de alguna manera, servir de, eh, de espacios de ventilación urbana. Los meteorólogos también han desarrollado varios aspectos desde el punto de vista del viento. La isla de calor es un tema interesante. Y también los ingenieros. Los ingenieros eh, aeronáuticos también han entrado en comprender el viento dentro de la ciudad, desde, evidentemente, de los objetos. Entonces, lo que yo voy a presentar rápidamente es cómo esto lo hemos llevado a un ejercicio eh, que busca generar normativas y parámetros de diseño, y puntualmente en la ciudad de Punta Arenas. Es la ciudad más austral de Chile, y lo interesante de esta ciudad es que el viento, más del 90%, viene de la misma dirección, del oeste. Esto facilita eh, los factores, dado que el viento es uno de los elementos difíciles de investigar por las cantidades de variables que generan sus cambios. Eh, por lo tanto, la ciudad está sometida eh, y tiene un frente, ¿cierto?, barlovento y azotavento, que es muy marcado. Aquí hay algunas estadísticas. Los vientos del año pasado superaron los 180 kilómetros por hora. Es muchísimo. Eh, y la verdad es que voy a mostrar algunas imágenes, pero que cuando aparecen estas ráfagas de viento... Eh, definitivamente la gente se tiene que agarrar de, los, de las partes donde pueda. Por ejemplo, aquí podemos ver una imagen que la ciudad le ponen cuerdas cuando hay mucho viento para que simplemente la gente no salga volando. Y así hay una serie de anécdotas y accidentes que ocurren en esta ciudad. Por lo tanto, el tema del viento aquí eh, es fundamental integrarlo como un dato a la ciudad. ¿eh? El asunto es cómo hacerlo. Y aquí es donde se desarrolla una metodología experimental que incorpora... Eh, tanto aspectos de espacios públicos y la morfología urbana. Se detectan finalmente cinco áreas de espacios públicos, y esto es importante decirlo, que se han gastado más de 50 millones de dólares en remodelar cinco espacios públicos durante 10 años. Y la verdad es que estos espacios públicos no fueron diseñados con criterios aerodinámicos o criterios de viento y pasan vacíos. Pasan vacíos, la gente no va, no tiene ninguna estrategia de incorporar el viento dentro de sus diseños. Entonces nosotros lo que hicimos fue lo siguiente, inventamos una metodología para poder levantar estos datos y así poder generar ¿cierto? Un, un registro eh, del comportamiento del viento. Hicimos un modelamiento, se tomaron todos los proyectos de espacios públicos existentes, se hizo primero una verificación a nivel especulativo, Luego, con programas como el Ecotex, por ejemplo, que se reconocen zonas más cálidas, zonas más frías, las fachadas más cálidas, las fachadas más frías. Luego, con estaciones meteorológicas, logramos levantar datos que finalmente se traducen en un modelo eh, que, según la velocidad del viento, va arrojando el comportamiento eh, del viento dentro de la morfología urbana y así poder incorporarlo a lo que es el diseño urbano. Esto la verdad es que es experimental, eh, estamos tratando de eh, convertir de mejor manera estos datos, pero eh, bueno, finalmente también hay un estudio estadístico de dónde se ubica la gente. Pero básicamente eso es lo que yo quería mostrar. Gracias.
please. Our next speaker is Tom Han Tom Weiser. He comes from Nazca Maps. He's the managing director. He will be presenting on a smart geo platform for climate adaptation. Yes, hello, my name is uh, Ham Tambazer and uh, a year ago I took a quite disruptive decision with two partners, we started a new company um, in Smart Maps. Um, and these Smart Maps, we believe that they, um, sorry, this one, yes. Um, we believe that these interactive mapping applications, that they can help and contribute in the transition to a sustainable society and also to a smarter community. It will enable people to make decisions and change their behavior. So what are the, the main characteristics of these uh, smart maps? Um, we start always from open source, open data and existing initiatives. We don't want to uh, find out the hot water again. So we have to combine everything exists and you just have to see the big relations in it and, and, and visualize it quite clear. Um, we have to start small and focused, but you can expand modular. And we try to make them as personal as, as possible um, so they can also support participation. So what we also try, and it's the last but not least, is to uh, visualize the knowledge in a very simple and accessible way because that's what we need. Um, so in that matter, we started the project Citizen. And what is Citizen? Um, it's in the broader aspect of resilience that citizens should be able to have the right information to take the right decisions to adapt to the bad consequences of climate and maybe afterwards even to mitigate um, these uh, problems. So um, in, the, in the, the past, we saw that bottom-up initiatives, traditional top-down initiatives to tackle this um, were not working because the solution of solution does not exist. So what we want to do is to bring the citizen and the city together in a circular approach where we integrate all stakeholders and we take small steps and small wins to come to a very sustainable solution at the end. We deliver smart maps to the citizens. These smart maps, they can be mobile, they can be web services, they can be also put on billboards and they are focused, which means they visualize a certain thematic. For example, in air pollution, you can only tackle um, the elderly people and those with respiratory problems. And you, for, for example, alert them when they do not have to do um, physical efforts or when they can uh, map their route to their, from their home to their work in a more efficient and more healthy way. But as said, you can also uh, build other applications for carbon neutrality for everything. In the other uh, way, you have the city. The city will have the information uh, flow from these smart maps, from the people, but they will also be able to uh, monitor their uh, policy and, if possible, adjust and measure the impact. Um, so we have, in fact, two main flows. One from all stakeholders, the citizens in this case, which we will be able to take action by the information provided, even in real time, by the city, and they can change their behavior. And at the same time, they can also be a citizen as a sensor, which means participatory sensing. They also can inform the city about what they want. And we try to collaborate with every stakeholder. So um, we, we dedicate these maps that interaction of stakeholders is really um, possible. At the other hand, the city will be able to really visualize its data in a more efficient way and see the things they want to communicate and want to inform the citizens about. They can sensitize and also empower the citizens um, to take actions in the future, to change their behavior. And last but not least, they can also monitor the impact of their policy and adjust it to have a better quality of place at the end for everybody. Um, so what is now the status? We are creating a living lab in an ecosystem city of Antwerp with all stakeholders. And the objective is to build a really innovative solution. We focus on air pollution because Antwerp is a hotspot in air pollution. And there is a link with mobility and health. And later, we will integrate carbon neutrality. Um, so if you're interested in our services or in collaboration or looking for a partner in Horizon 2020, um, please contact us. Thank you.
please our, welcome our next speaker, Dier Aspuru. He comes from Technalia Research and Innovation. He will be presenting the project Urban Design in Bilbao with Soundscape Criteria. Okay, hello. Uh, in Technalia, we are working in the concept of comfort, urban place. What is, that? What is this? So it's a, place, it's a place that is pleasing to people who use it, and uh, also it's a place that is, has it, its own identity, adapted to the specific environmental conditions of the space and to the perception of the public that enjoys this, this space. And those places provide excellence to their cities. So Technalia is building knowledge to assess, to contribute with ideas, and to validate the design of urban places in terms of uh, co environmental comfort. That for us, this is we work in thermal comfort, uh, soundscape and visual comfort, uh, and also adapting the place to the, to the people. But this is the next future. So now I'm going to speak about urban design in Bilbao City, considering soundscape criteria, so only one of the items of that I spoke before. Uh, this project is led by uh, the municipality of Bilbao in collaboration with Technalia. And we speak about the General La Torre Square. This is the square. Uh, this is how it was some months ago, because now it's been renovated with our uh, the, the new design. So what we did is uh, an, an initial assessment of the quality of the area uh, using the methodology of a life uh, project called QuadMap. And uh, this assessment has uh, different uh, parts. One is the expert analysis of non-acoustic criteria. So we rated some uh, factors of the place, so landscape, cleanliness, and maintenance, safety, urban context, proximity to residential areas, and also accessibility, and some information about the noise sources. But apart from that, we also go, uh, went to the place and we did some in situ study behavior, uh, studying the behavior analysis, so how the people use really the place. So they mainly use the place for resting, social interaction, and also for reading and relaxing. So all the benches, benches were fully occupied. And we also uh, observed how the people uh, walk through the, through the, through the area, uh, either by the stairs or the ramps or whatever. And also we went to the place uh, to ask the people how they feel in this place. So we had a meeting with the, with the resident associa residents association. And also we did questionnaires to users. So we have an environmental psychologist in our group, so we know how to to deal with, with comfort. So we asked to 85 people in this case, in the morning and in the evening is when they use the place, really. And they, uh, they answer us how they perceive the area. They perceive as accessible, as clean and, man and well maintained, as safe, less pleasant to a visual point of view. Uh, they have a global satisfaction with the place uh, of uh, close to 40, 40 above uh, 10, uh, 100, sorry. So we have a lot of improvement to do. And also about the sound atmosphere. So they perceive the sound atmosphere as pleasant, congruent, calm. Uh, calm. And also about which uh, type of sources they, they, they listen and how they perceive them. So they perceive uh, traffic and, uh, as uh, unpleasant and birds as pleasant. But apart from that, and this is the last part of the initial assessment, we did some measurements, and also not only noise level, but also identifying which were the events that they, they were there. All of, all of the events are, were negative, in this case, traffic. And uh, we, we, we built the environmental sound experience indicator that is uh, developed by Technalia. With this, we, uh, we assess the, the comfort in acoustic, uh, the acoustic comfort. Uh, the, this indicator rates in five in this case, so it's, uh, the, the top is 10, so it's quite uh, far from the top. So we have a lot of things to do. So what we uh, proposed were different challenges to introduce in the, in the, in the area, in the change of the, of, the, of the square. So these challenges we converted into clear ideas, and we uh, analyzed and uh, quantified the benefit in terms of the index and identifying which were the more interesting ones. And we decided, uh, well, the, the municipality decided uh, a, new, uh, a new design. You can see it in a more fancy way. This is, this is how the, the square will look like in, in, the, in some months. And there is a specific uh, emblematic element of the square. It's a fountain that uh, will be programmed to create positive events, uh, uh, sound events. It's located uh, so that it, the sound uh, will mask the traffic noise. Uh, the operation will be adapted to the different scenarios of the day, and it will be illuminated with LEDs. So uh, th this is the idea, and uh, hopefully we will uh, keep working, uh, integrating uh, uh, urban uh, environmental comfort in urban design. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tier. Please welcome Cynthia Chávez. He comes from the Urban Ecology Agency in Barcelona. He will be presenting on public space in resilient cities. Hola, ¿qué tal? 
Eh, pues sí, no, eh, eh, vengo de la Agencia de Ecología Urbana de Barcelona y nosotros, digamos, eh, el espacio público lo, lo entendemos como el gran espacio catalizador de una sociedad, en donde se plasma no solamente cultura y tradición, sino también los grandes cambios y, y digamos, este proceso hacia una ciudad más inteligente se puede dar allí. Entonces, eh, partiendo de la idea que una ciudad inteligente lo que hace no solamente es adaptarse a los cambios, sino sobre todo preverlos y hacer, digamos, estrategias que permitan hacerla más resiliente. Nosotros entendemos esto que la planificación urbana lo que ha de hacer es integrar este concepto, con lo cual una planificación urbana inteligente lo que hace es organizar la información de tal forma uh, que nos sirva a establecer las estrategias adecuadas no solo para identificar y saber radiografiar nuestra realidad urbana actual, sino de cara a futuro. Esto que veis es un trabajo de los tantos que realizamos en la agencia enfocado al espacio público, que es el índice de habitabilidad. Este índice eh, está formado, digamos, de cuatro grandes grupos de variables que tienen en cuenta los aspectos ergonómicos de atracción, confort y proximidad. La ergonomía, digamos, entendida de todo aquello que eh, condiciona físicamente la manera en la que diseñamos y distribuimos nuestros espacios públicos a manera de atracción, aquellos elementos que inciden sobre la atracción de más personas y que pueden generar espacios con mayor masa crítica. A nivel de confort son los aspectos que inciden sobre eh, la tolerancia a nivel de, de confort térmico, de calidad del aire o de niveles sonoros. Y finalmente la proximidad, que la proximidad sobre todo ya abarca una... Una, una escala, digamos, más urbana, identifica los servicios urbanos próximos a una población. Con ello, lo que nos permite es poder identificar para las diferentes realidades urbanas un termómetro, digamos, o, o una manera de eh, ver el valor que tiene en cada uno de estos espacios en función de todas estas variables. Este es el caso de la calle de Aragó que como veis, la, tanto la percepción del verde como los niveles de ruido, la calidad del aire, están muy por debajo de los niveles adecuados. O casos como por ejemplo en Rigranados, en los cuales los, las variables y los niveles de cada una de estas variables incrementan, con lo cual el potencial de habitabilidad es mucho mayor. Y esto al final eh, nosotros lo intentamos plasmar con el objetivo no solamente de identificar qué es lo que sucede en, 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 las, en el diario digamos, de, de una ciudad, sino también para poder mejorar y establecer estrategias que eh, optimicen el, los recursos locales. Como sabéis, el espacio público es eh, un constante escenario de sustituciones eh, y obras digamos, a lo largo del año de una eh, serie de trabajos de mantenimiento y a la vez la, la flexibilidad de la incorporación de nuevos elementos como es la información. Y por otro lado, eh, obviamente que el eh, ob objetivo final es el de poder generar espacios de relación de mayor calidad, que esto en definitiva nos permita no solo volcar esta información organizada de tal forma que eh, nos ayude en la planificación y a la vez nos dé, digamos, la pauta a, a, a caminos o estrategias de cara a una transición hacia un modelo más sostenible. Y bueno, para no alargarlo más, eh, entendemos que, digamos, una ciudad, en la medida en la que podamos ir convirtiendo a una sociedad eh, urbana más resiliente, vendrá dado precisamente en cómo tratemos y eh, combinemos no solamente la realidad y la información, sino en la utilidad y la eficiencia de ella. Así es que a nosotros que nos interesa de estos foros, pues conocer otras, eh, digamos, entidades que se desarrollen en estas áreas que puedan estar interesadas en el binomio, digamos, de metodologías o instrumentos de desarrollo, así como experimentos o, o pruebas, digamos, eh, pilotos. ¿no? Gracias. Thank you, Cynthia. Our next speaker will be Andrea Brasci. He comes from the Ecocentro Tecnologia Ambientali, and he will be speaking on a project on treatment and recovery of street cleaning. Pues muy bien, buenos días. Uh, estamos hablando del tratamiento y de la recuperación de residuos 
procedentes del barrido de las calles. Yo me llamo Andrea Braski. I am the European Social Fund uh, project coordinator of Ecocentro Tecnologie Ambientali, an Italian enterprise uh, which uh, is specialized in the design, construction, and running of plants for the treatment and recovery of waste materials obtained from street cleaning operation. Uh, what are we talking about? We're talking about a huge mountain of waste. Um, one million tons in Italy, 20 kilos each person in Italy, and uh, a big problem because uh, every day this huge mountain of waste is simply transferred to dump, is landfilled, and that's not a smart solution. It's just like hiding the dirt under the carpet. That's not smart. That's not smart enough for our society. So what's the solution, our smart solution? It's a plant which transforms the 70% of the waste, of this kind of waste, treated into raw materials. We're talking about uh, gravel, fine gravel and coarse gravel, and sand. These raw materials are good for building and construction enterprises. And uh, the 70% of recovery level is something very smart. And how does it work? It works like a big washing machine, which washes the waste and after, thanks to a sifting process, separates gravel, sand, and uh, other materials. And uh, why are we sure that our project is smart? Because it's always twice smart. Let's focus on the economic point of view. Municipalities which bring the waste to our plant pay less, the 20% less than landfilling. That's one of the first important things to say. And uh, the material, the raw material, costs less to the building and construction enterprise, 15% less. The company which runs the plant gets paid twice by municipalities and by building and construction industries. And that's the economic point of view. What about the environmental point of view? Uh, no more quarries and mines to produce sand and gravel. Uh, no more dams. And the plant, it's almost totally self-sufficient by an energetic point of view. All the electricity requirement comes from the photovoltaic panels of the roof of the plant. And the water requirement, requirement the 80%, comes from the same waste treated from rain water. Thank you very much. We're looking for smart people to join together our smart project. Thank you. Thanks, Andrea. Our next speaker is uh, Andreas Helmik. He comes from Steak Power Minerals. He will be explaining a solution on air cleaning for our cities. Thank you. Uh, yes, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, please let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Andreas Helmik. I'm a biologist and I work for Steak Power Minerals since the beginning of the year. Um, actually, I'm the responsible, uh, responsible project manager for PhotoMend. Unfortunately, uh, Andreas Hubert, the CEO of uh, Power Minerals, uh, couldn't stay here today, so he asked me to uh, tell you something about PhotoMend as an option, as air cleaning solution for our cities. Increasing, uh, increasing uh, emissions of industry and uh, traffic cause environmental pollution. 
um, especially high levels of NOx or NOx, however do you call it, uh, concentrations lead to uh, long time uh, to short time diseases like nausea and emesis, but also to long term diseases of our respiratory organs. Until 2015, communities in EU are obliged to take measures to reduce uh, NOx concentrations. Traffic limitations. Traffic limitations are often insufficient, so the order has to be to find new ways to reduce the air pollutant pollutions. Uh, one way is the use of photomant. What is photomant? Photomant is an innovative concrete additive which uh, is photocatalytically active. It consists of fine-grained, uh, mainly dust-like glassy particles combined with titanium, titanium dioxide. Titanium dioxide is known as a white pigment in a couple of products. And how does it work? Uh, when exposed to light, photomen causes the building of radicals which reduce harmful NOx to harmless NO3, which is spoiled off with the next rain. The uh, photocatalytic reaction also builds a super hydrophilic surface with the result that falling rain rinses off and uh, rin um, er erodes and rinses off uh, dirt material and biological material. So the surface uh, stays clean longer and cleans itself. You all, you all, of, you, all of you know the phenomenon. Um, a white plastic cutting board contaminated with tomato juice or gravy uh, to dish it with hot water and detergent does not clean it. Uh, uh, expose it to daylight or better to direct sunlight and after a short time the uh, cutting board will be clean again. This uh, is the effect of photocatalysis. Summarize the effects of photomend are a reduction of air pollutants, self-cleaning of surfaces and inhibition of biological growth. The surface can stay clean longer and cleans itself. The result is clean air and clean surfaces. Um, using photoman can be beneficial wherever large surfaces come into contact with light and air. It is especially effective for a range of applications. For example, for paving blocks and concrete slabs, for roofing tiles, facade plasters and paints. And it's al uh, always imaginable for uh, road surfing or white topping, for acoustic barriers and screen walls, thousands of other possibilities are imaginable. The effectiveness, uh, the effectiveness of photomend, of the different features of photomend, uh, especially the NOx reduction, is shown uh, in more than 1,500 paving stones produced in our certified laboratory in Gladbeck, and uh, the NOx reduction is confirmed and approved by uh, the Technical University of Berlin, Professor Alois Stefan. The uh, effectiveness of photomend regarding NOx concentration is also, also shown by Professor Michael Bruser, University of Mainz. Uh, in a three-dimensional simulation uh, of a district of Bottrop Innovation Cities. Ladies and gentlemen, I am absolutely convinced that photoman uh, can be an important step to, on our way to reduce environmental pollution in our cities. Find more information on photoman.com and visit us at our exhibition booth uh, in Hall 2. Photoman is developed uh, by the energy company Steag, Power Minerals and Kronos. Thank you for your uh, uh, attention. Thank you. Thank you, Andreas. Next speaker is Alfredo Llorente. He comes from Novotech. He will be sp um, explaining his project on uh, elective uh, cartography. He's a geoprevention of criminology. Uh, 
Buenas, buenos días, mi nombre es Alfredo Llorente, eh, trabajo como ingeniero de sistemas en Nobel Tech eh, y a su vez eh, estoy haciendo la tesis doctoral sobre geografía del crimen. Eh, una noción muy rápida de geografía del crimen, que es, para mí, la bueno, según diferentes estudios, la geografía del crimen eh, se resume en el análisis, el diagnóstico y la prevención de la distribución espacial de los actos criminológicos en un entorno territorial y sus efectos territoriales y geográficos principales se podrían resumir en estos tres puntos desuso y abandono de los elementos urbanísticos, empobrecimiento de las condiciones socioeconómicas territoriales y la estigmatización e influencia de determinados territorios. Eh, gracias a las nuevas tecnologías se han formulado nuevas eh, herramientas de colaboración entre las fuerzas de seguridad y la ciudadanía He puesto dos ejemplos donde es la propia policía la que pone al servicio de los ciudadanos aquellos actos delictivos donde se pueden observar los puntos geolocalizados de cada delito con su información asociada, aplicaciones gratuitas y, en sentido contrario, aquellas aplicaciones donde es la ciudadanía la que pone al servicio de la policía eh, aquellos conocimientos que tiene de su entorno. Si ve incidencias en su barrio, si ve un delito que cree considerable de cartografiar, lo geolocaliza y le, lleva a, le llega a las autoridades competentes en materia de seguridad. Eh, gracias a estas nuevas tecnologías, Noveltec eh, ha desarrollado una plataforma, se la hemos denominado Gestión de Activos Municipales, en la cual, eh, a través de una plataforma simple, la policía puede realizar informes, análisis y geoprevención de actos delictivos relacionando los actos criminológicos con otras variables socioeconómicas, población, edad, condiciones económicas del barrio, etc. Y a su vez, dichos actos delictivos tienen una información asociada y gracias a lo cual se pueden realizar planes de prevención delictiva para los, fuerzos, para los cuerpos y fuerzas de seguridad del Estado, de las administraciones. Perdón. Eh, estas herramientas eh, no estarían completas si no se produjese una relación a su vez entre la ciudadanía y la administración. No solo la administración es la que tiene que usar estas tecnologías para dar información al ciudadano, sino que a su vez el ciudadano debe poder participar en la administración y en los presupuestos de su población. Eh, la geografía del crimen y, en consecuencia, estas tres herramientas, ¿qué conclusiones tienen? Principalmente, lo que ayudan es a una geoprevención del espacio, a una reducción de los índices delictivos y a una mejor calidad de vida de los ciudadanos, que es el, es el fin último de todas estas conferencias, ¿no? que aumente la calidad de vida de los ciudadanos gracias a estas nuevas tecnologías aplicadas a las administraciones públicas. Se crean, gracias a estas plataformas, nuevos escenarios, estrategias sobre diagnósticos y geoprevenciones para luchar contra estos actos delictivos y dichos ejemplos de colaboración ciudadana promocionan una mayor transparencia administrativa, lo que va a conllevar a una mejor gobernabilidad tanto para la administración como para los ciudadanos que en el fondo son los que habitamos nuestros entornos urbanos. Muchas gracias y muy amables por asistir. Thanks, Alfredo. Very good. Um, please welcome Paul. Our next speaker will be Paul Connell. He comes from Actuated Futures. He will be presenting on building a smart technology at neighborhood scale. Good morning, everyone. Um, the first thing I need to say is um, thanks very much to the IRENE project, which is a, a European funded project which is about energy efficient neighbourhoods. Um, Actuate Futures is um, uh, my company, and we're a partnership between a sustainable developer and a technology company, and we're building digitally enabled uh, places and hence we are also creating an energy efficient neighborhood. So today is a, a tale of uh, two cities, a tale of two developments, a tale of two companies which needed to come together, two technology platforms and one bakery. 
which we'll come to later on. So this is Leeds. The building in the foreground there is a building called the Greenhouse, which you can look up online. Um, it's a sustainable development. It has over 1,000 metres within it, and they measure a very high uh, frequency and density. Um, water, so that's hot water, cold water, grey water, energy, heating. And when it was built in 2007, we presented them on a platform that was on a TV, linked to the um, communications over all over IP. Um, so when we came to build the next development in Sheffield, which is the second city, um, on a brownfield site two years ago, everyone's got a smartphone, everyone wants to have a sustainable development, not many people know how to um, live in those developments. So the, the, the project we're looking at is how do you deploy a digitally enabled place for people using smart technology and communicating to them? Whoa! <laughs> well, that's how you do it. But that's not, that's not much fun. So where we are, and we've had a, an extensive consultation with the people in the greenhouse, which is a real living lab. We have people there, we've got Facebook groups there. We have people who want, to, who want to learn how to use their place better, want to know more about how they use energy. This is where we are now. This is the Actuate um, user interface. Four elements at the moment which is the bakery. This is the bakery at, at Kellam Island, which is the sales um, and marketing suite. So we know how much energy people are using at any one time, how much they spent, whether the doors are open, what temperature it is, whether it's too warm or too cold, how much water has been used. And the next step is how you make that useful to people, how you make people understand it, how they know more. So it's in, this is the water example. Because we're going to be monitoring at 30 second intervals, we'll know whether they've used the washing machine, we'll be able to tell them. That's the link if you want to check it out. And that's us, Actuated Futures, so you can check it out and get in touch. And this is a really useful paper. If you check out the Irene project and look at their roadmap, they've done a, an in-depth roadmap of how neighbourhoods can be built and this is really important because it speaks to what Richard Ford was talking about yesterday, is the impact of urbanisation and technology. And these are going to be built at neighbourhood scale, at small scales, not at large mega city scales, in my opinion. But this is the, the roadmap to that. Thanks very much. Thank you, Paul. Next, we have uh, Jordi Robles Figueres. He comes from Ecology. He will be presenting on uh, Aquasfera, which is an application for, the, for helping uh, citizens um, taking decisions. And Hola, buenos días. Hoy venimos a, a presentaros Aquasfera, que es un servicio de escucha activa del ciudadano para la toma de decisiones. Está claro que como todos sabemos, se ha pasado de tendencia a necesidad. Y la pregunta que nos estamos haciendo es, ¿vale la pena adaptarse? ¿Por qué? Porque no podemos ignorar la influencia que está teniendo actualmente las redes sociales en las ciudades. Y gracias a tener el conocimiento de las redes sociales, pues nos permite a ver qué opiniones y qué inquietudes tiene el ciudadano. Por otro lado, como todos sabemos, también ha cambiado la manera de relacionarse entre nosotros. Ahora pues la gente se relaciona mucho eh, a través de, los, de las redes sociales. ¿Y eso que ha hecho? Que, pues eso ha hecho que también eh, las ciudades se tengan que enfrentar a otra manera de gestionar información, a otra manera de comunicarse. Es, las redes sociales ya no son una moda, es un hábito, han cambiado las costumbres y las reglas del juego. Entonces eh, hay un dicho que dice que tenemos dos orejas y una boca para escuchar el doble de lo que hablamos, ¿no? Entonces, eh, con esta transparencia queremos decir que es importantísimo saber lo que está diciendo el ciudadano. 
Por otro lado, eh, está claro también que se están haciendo muchos trabajos actualmente de datos objetivos con el Big Data, con el, el Ayuntamiento de Barcelona, muchos ayuntamientos de España, Cataluña y del mundo están trabajando en Big Data, pero nos estamos dejando esta parte de datos subjetivos, las opiniones, las quejas, las dudas, estas oportunidades que nos pueden surgir y para ello, en eh, esto está claro ya que es una realidad, como hemos dicho en social media, para ello se ha creado Aquasfera con un valor diferencial de canalizar y estructurar toda la información que el ciudadano está aportando para ayudar a las instituciones a gestionar esta información. Aquasfera, como hemos dicho, es una solución de escucha activa del ciudadano para la toma de decisiones. ¿Y cómo lo hace? Pues automatiza toda la monitorización y eh, recoge toda esta información que el ciudadano está aportando en un informe dinámico como el que vemos aquí de geolocalización, con sus gráficos, con sus menciones. Después de esto, una vez tenemos toda esta información almacenada con un criterio de clasificación, dirigimos esta información a la persona relevante de la institución. Esto es un valor añadido que tiene Aguasfera porque actualmente sí que hay muchas herramientas de monitorización pero no existe una herramienta en la cual se pueda dirigir la información a la persona relevante. Como bien ponemos aquí también, Aquasfera es la suma de Branchards y Aqualogy. Branchards es una empresa puntera en el sector de la monitorización y Aqualogy ha aportado este valor diferencial de eh, dirigir la información a la persona relevante del ayuntamiento de la institución. Esta segmentación de información eh, se hace, como hemos dicho, con unos criterios de clasificación donde eh, con... podemos dirigir esta, estas menciones directamente al departamento de urbanismo, al departamento jurídico, al departamento de atención al cliente, segmentando toda esta información conforme va entrando en redes sociales. Al final, ¿qué hace Aquasfera? Pues nos proporciona una información para que tomemos una, una decisión. Mediante estos informes dinámicos, donde se aglutina toda la información y en un comité de dirección, eh, un grupo de departamento puede tomar decisiones versus los resultados que han ido obteniendo, o con esta aplicación mobile, que son para ya eh, menciones que se puedan producir en la red, que tengan alguna alerta, pues críticas al ayuntamiento, se ha producido una fuga de agua en, en la calle tal, un poco para esta finalidad y esta agilidad de poder responder al ciudadano lo más rápido posible. Al final es Aquasfera lo que hace es eh, traslada una solución para apoyar a las instituciones a gestionar toda la información que el ciudadano nos está aportando. Y para finalizar dejamos esta pregunta al aire, ¿no? Es, escuchamos, queremos ser más transparentes, queremos eh, resolver las dudas de los ciudadanos, queremos tomar decisiones en base a toda esta información que el ciudadano nos está aportando. Muchas gracias por vuestra atención. Si hay alguna duda, pues estoy a vuestra disposición en todo momento. Gracias. Thank you, uh, Jordi. Our last speaker is uh, Juan Ramón Mena. He comes from Acefat. He will be presenting on an EWISE, a solution for the security and the urban services. Hello. Uh, my name is Juan Ramón Mesa. I'm the CIO from Acefat, and I want to introduce you uh, EWISE. This is our nice city. This is Barcelona. This is our livable city. And sometimes when a, thing, a bad thing happens, the city becomes a hell. But this is the hell. In this case, uh, somebody punched a water pipe, and now we have a nice geyser and we have uh, unhappy neighbors and we have a problem the we have a failure in the in the utility network of water and probably we have a failure in the power uh, utility network what we are providing we i want to explain what uh ewise ewise is, is a platform based on web services uh we have two goals uh, with this platform The first goal is that we are protecting the utility network of the companies, of our partners. Our partners now are the power company, the water company uh, here in Barcelona, uh, the uh, government, local government, the Ayuntamiento de Barcelona, etc. 
and we are with the giving information in the place where the work is doing, uh, we are protecting uh, the network of the utility company. We have another, also, also, also we, have, we have another goal. Uh, this platform is smart and the Swiss enable. Uh, we are obtaining information from the company, sorry, <laughs> but this information is obtained from the, um, directly from the company via a uh, website. With, uh, uh, with service. We are not collecting information. We are only in the middle between the user and the company. Uh, another interesting uh, um, goal is that we are assuring the safety, uh, the access control to this information. This information sometimes it, it will be dangerous if are in inappropriate hands. Uh, let me show. Uh, this platform adapts to the necessities of uh, different utility companies. Uh, we have five uh, models to connect to the different uh, utility companies, uh, five models based on web services. And let me show how does it work. Uh, sorry? Uh, here. Yes. It's very easy, the, the running. Uh, the user enters in our system. He identifies. Uh, the user enters in a map, and in this map, the user selects uh, an area where he wants the information of the underground, the information about the, the power company, the gas company, etc. And also, the user, uh, we send this information to every one of our partners. We send the information to the government, local government, to the water company, to the gas company, and we receive instead uh, different maps. In this case, we have the map of the power company, Endesa. Here we have the map of the Aguas de Barcelona company. This is the water company here in Barcelona. And also we have another uh, maps. In this case, this is the fiber optical channel of, uh, map from the uh, city hall. Uh, some facts uh, and I finish. Uh, this is a, this is a, a system that works uh, not only in the, in the construction and in the design of projects, this, this, this system works in the prevention inside the resilience. Uh, we are thinking always from the point of view of the preventing from instead of recovering from. Some facts, and I finish. Um, we have 38,000 requests for a year. Um, now the platform is used by near uh, 5,000 uh, professional users, and the users are the organization's users from the platform are administration, utilities network, uh, managers, companies, engineering companies, um, police, firewall, uh, civil protection, and other companies. What type of other companies? Restaurants. If you have any doubt, uh, you can ask me. Uh, thank you for your time. This is our partners, uh, Aguas de Barcelona, Gas Natural, ONO, Telefónica, Endesa, Red Eléctrica, y el Ayuntamiento de Barcelona. Thank you. You want to visit? We are here in Barcelona in Via Gusta 59, and you are welcome. Thanks. Thank you to you all. Because you have stitched to your times, we will have now, now some minutes for questions and answers. We've listened very bright presentations. I am really, I, I was impressed. I'm really happy. We've seen how what we can we plan our cities and we have the tools that help us to plan it with uh, taking in consideration wind, taking into consideration sound, taking in consideration the, some um, um, environmental indicators. How can we interact with the energy that we, that we are, uh, that we are uh, using? How can we become more, more energy efficient? Crime also, how, how can we know which uh, urban services we are sitting on top of in each of the houses? We are seeing how can we make something good from the, all, all the, everything that is uh, recollected in the streets, everything that, that we clean from the streets. We've also seen how can we clean uh, the, the cities, uh, the air of our cities, and we have seen also how can we um, interact with our governments and also how can we create through crowdfunding better maps.